More than one million people braved the second coldest New Year's Eve ever as temperatures dropped to a bone-chilling 10 F while revelers watched the glittering ball drop with a burst of confetti and spectacular fireworks in Times Square. Earlier on Sunday, New York police warned revelers to suit up in thermals, hats and gloves or risk frostbite and hypothermia. Thousands of people had already started gathering more than 12 hours before the midnight countdown to 2018 to see the glittering crystal ball drop in Times Square. It ended up being one of the coldest celebrations on record, held under tight security after a year that saw several fatal attacks on large crowds, including one in Times Square itself last spring. Partygoers were warned they would be penned in place for hours and to bundle up in preparation. The National Weather Service predicted temperatures in the mid-teens in Times Square at midnight Sunday, with wind chill values that could make it feel like minus 5 F, minus 15 Celsius. It was only 14 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 10 Celsius, in the city by late afternoon, already making it one of the coldest celebrations on record. The event rivaled some of the coldest New Year's celebrations on record. In 1962 it was just 11 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 11.67 Celsius, outside, and in 1939 and 2008 it was 18 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 7.78 Celsius, at least it won't be as cold as the frostiest ball drop on record, 1 degree Fahrenheit, minus 17.22 Celsius, in 1917, Remel Scott, 22, and her boyfriend Brad Whitaker, 22, of San Diego, arrived shortly after 9 a.m., saying they were trying to keep a positive attitude as temperatures hovered in the teens. Each wore several layers of clothing. Our toes are frozen, so we're just dealing with it by dancing, Scott said. Some wore red scarves that read Happy New Year and others donned yellow and purple hats as a pizza delivery man sold pies to the hungry crowd. In a prime viewing spot near 42nd Street, Alexander Ebrahim grinned as he looked around at the flashing lights of Times Square. I always saw it on TV, so I thought why not come out and see it in person, said the 19-year-old from Orange County, California. It's an experience you can never forget. Michael Waller, 45, made a snap decision on Saturday evening to drive straight from Columbus, Ohio. He made it to Times Square at 8 a.m. and waited all day in front of the ball. I didn't want to stay home for this, by myself, he said. The NYPD tweeted out a checklist for partygoers, including hand warmers, wool socks, thermals and more thermals. Extra police and fire personnel monitored weather conditions and the safety of those in attendance to outdoor events in Times Square. After two terrorist attacks and a rampaging SUV driver who plowed into a crowd on the very spot where the party took place Sunday night, police didn't take any chances. The police department estimated that it cost $7.5 million to protect the event, with security being tighter than ever before. Garages in the area were emptied of cars and sealed off and detectives were stationed at area hotels working with security officials to prevent sniper attacks. Thousands of uniformed officers lined the streets, while cement blocks and sanitation trucks blocked vehicles from entering the secure area where spectators gathered. Revelers were required to pass through one of a dozen checkpoints where they were screened and then screened again before they were able